Good day! Welcome to our lesson for today, which is all about the structure and function of a flower. Bago natin pag-usapan ang lesson natin ngayon, palikan muna natin yung ating napag-aralan last time, which is all about the plant growth and development. Again, pag sinasabi natin na plant growth, it involves measurable changes in plant resulting mainly from increase in cell number. At pag sinasabi natin na development, it involves qualitative changes resulting from the production of new tissues and organs. Tama kayo. At napag-usapan din natin ang iba't ibang klase ng hormones or regulators na tumutulong para sa growth and development ng isang halaman. Tulad ng auxins na siya nag stimulate para sa cells na mag-divide at mag-elongate. May tinatawag din tayong cytokinins. that stimulate cell division and differentiation. Meron din tayong tinatawag na giverilins that promotes seed germination at meron din tayong tinatawag na abscissins that inhibits the seed germination at ang huli, ethylene that promotes leaf abscission, ripening of fruits, wilting of flowers, and Aging of leaves. Dahil ang topic natin ngayon ay structure and function of a flower, mapag-uusapan natin dito yung iba't ibang parts and function of a flower. Ia-analyze din natin kung paano nga ba natin-develop ang male and female gametophytes at pag-uusapan natin kung paano nagkakaroon ng pollination at double fertilization. Mayroon ba kayong mga halaman na namumulaklak tuwing hapon at meron din naman mga halaman na namumulaklak tuwing umaga. Related yan sa tinatawag natin na photoperiod, which is the environmental stimulus that plants use most often to detect the time of year, relative lengths of night and day. Ito din yung mga tinatawag natin na light duration and day length. Kung saan yung mga halaman ay nagre-require ng particular time period of light exposure to enter various life cycle stages. Isa na nga dyan yung blooming or yung pamumulaklak. At kaugnay din dito kung kailan, okay, magbibigay ng bunga yung isang puno or halaman, kailan din naman siya maglalagas ng dahon. Ibig sabihin, nakaka-apekto yung environment doon sa nangyayari sa isang halaman. At yung tinatawag naman natin na photoperiodism is a physiological response to photoperiod such as a flowering. Sa photoperiodism, hinihikayat nito yung shot na mag-produce ng floral buds kung saan nanggagaling yung bulaklak instead of leaves and lateral bands. At meron tayong tinatawag na three types of photoperiodic plants kung saan meron tayong iba't ibang klase ng halaman na tinatawag na short day plants. Ibig sabihin, kailangan nila ng light period shorter than a critical length of flower. Kailangan mas mahaba yung gabi. So dapat yung oras na ginagamit ng isang halaman, 14 hours or shorter para makonsider natin na short day plants. At pag sinasabi natin na long day plants, eto naman yung light period is longer than a certain number of hours. Ibig sabihin, dapat mas maikli yung gabi. Eto naman yung mga 14 hours and above. Example natin ng mga short day plants ay chrysanthemums, poinsettias, at yung mga soybeans plants. At yung mga long day plants naman, Example nito is yung mga radish, lettuce, and cereal varieties. At meron din tayong tinatawag na mga day-neutral plants kung saan sila yung mga unaffected plants by photoperiod and flower when they reach the certain age of maturity, regardless of day length. Example natin dito yung mga tomatoes, rice, and dandelions. Isa sa mga response na ginagawa ng halaman against sa mga major stresses tulad ng malalakas na hangin o malalakas na abo sa tubig, o yung mga mechanical stress is yung tinatawag na tigmomorphogenesis. Refers to the changes in form that results from mechanical perturbation. For example, yung mga halaman na lagi natin hinahawakan, na dinidiligan, that's what we call the mechanical stress, na kung saan nakaka-apekto din sa isang halaman. At isang example natin dito is yung tinatawag natin na touch specialist, na kung saan yung mga halaman naka-adapt na sa ganitong pangyayari kung saan once na hinawakan nila yung isang bagay 
agad silang kumakapit doon. For example, yung mga tinatawag natin na climbing plants or vines na kung saan originally yung mga tendrils nila ay diretso or straight. Yung lamang nagka-coil rapidly kapag meron silang nahawakan. At yung tinatawag natin na directional growth in response to touch ay tigmotropism. Pa sa mga halaman at kino-consider natin na may touch specialist is yung makahiya or damimosa pudica na kung saan itong halaman na ito was na hinawakan natin easily nagpo-fold yung kanyang leaflets. For example, dito sa picture number 1, kung unti-unti natin inilalapit yung ating finger and then later on nagpo-fold agad yung leaflets. Isa yan sa ginagawa niyang response against dun sa mga mechanical stress. Tulad natin yung mga tao, meron tayong tinatawag na body clock. Ganun din sa mga halaman. Meron tayong tinatawag na circadian rhythms. Cycles with a frequency of about 24 hours and not directly controlled by any known environmental variable. Na kung saan yung mga halaman natin ay kinoconsider natin na sa seal plants. Ibig sabihin, hindi sila nagmumove from one um, place. Etong circadian rhythms sa provide sa mga halaman to have an ability to adapt in daily changes o sa araw-araw na pagbabago ng panahon. And para malaman din ng mga halaman kung anong oras sila magpo-produce or magko-consume ng energy. The life cycle of plants are characterized by, by an alternation of generation in which multicellular haploid and diploid generation take turns producing each other. Again, pag sinasabi natin na haploid, one single set of chromosomes. Pag sinasabi natin na diploid, two sets of chromosomes. Ito mga diploid plant, mga sporophyte, ay nagpo-produce ng haploid spores by meiosis. Again, pag sinasabi natin na meiosis, lahat ng ito ay nagsisimula sa diploid cells. At dito na form yung tinatawag natin na mga sex cells. At yung mga spores ay nadidivide by mitosis. At pag sinasabi natin na mitosis, ito naman yung nagdi-divide ng mga replicated chromosomes equally into each of the two daughter cells. Kung saan nagbibigay do sa mga multicellular gametophytes, which is the male and female haploid plants that produce gametes, which is the sperms and the egg. Isa pa sa mahalaga natin pag-usapan is yung tinatawag natin na fertilization. The fusion of gametes results in diploid zygotes which divide by mitosis and form new sporophytes. So again, pag sinasabi natin na angiosperm, yung kanilang seeds are usually protected by the flesh of fruits while yung mga gymnosperms naman ay naka-exposed or naked seeds. Anyway, yung mga angiosperm natin tulad ng mga sporophyte is dominant in generation. Mas malalaki sila at mas mahaba yung buhay kaysa sa mga gametophyte. Yung mga sporophyte, again, sila yung mga diploid. Pag sinasabi natin na diploid, meron silang two sets of chromosomes and reproduce asexually. At pag sinasabi naman natin na gametophyte, sila yung mga haploid. Ibig sabihin, single set of chromosomes at nagre-reproduce sila sexually. Dahil ang topic natin ay structure and function of a flower, kailangan muna nating malaman kung saan niya ba siya kasama. At tinatawag natin yon na angiosperm life cycle. Ibig sabihin, meron tayong 3 Fs na dapat tandaan. Number 1 is what we call the flower, double fertilization, and last, the fruits. At ang una natin yung pag-uusapan ngayon ay yung flower. Yung mga floral organs natin ay tinatawag natin na stamens, carpels, sepals, and petals. At lahat ng ito, ay naka-attach doon sa tinatawag natin na part ng stem na receptacles. Mga stamens and carpels natin ay tinatawag natin na reproductive organs ng flowers. Samantalang yung mga sepal and petals naman ay tinatawag natin na sterile. Ibig sabihin, hindi sila nakakapag-develop ng fruits. At ngayon, isa-isa yun naman natin ang structure and functions ng ating flower. First is what we call the sepals, which enclose and protect an open floral buds and usually leafier in appearance than the other floral organs. At meron din tayong tinatawag na petals, which are typically more brightly colored than sepals, na kung saan nag attract siya ng insects and other pollinators. At yung stamen naman natin ay binubuo ng tinatawag natin na stalk, which is the filament, at yung kanyang terminal structure na anther. At sa bawat anther ay meron tayong chambers na tinatawag na microsporangia, 
o yung mga pollen sacs na kung saan napoproduce yung pollen. At sa mga carpel naman, ay meron tayong tinatawag na ovary at yung long slender neck na tinatawag natin na style. At meron tayong sa ibabaw ng style na tinatawag na stigma na kung saan nakakaptured yung mga pollens. At sa bawat ovary ay merong one or more ovules. At yung number of ovules ay nakadepende doon sa species. Yung mga flower natin ay merong single carpel. Yun lamang, marami tayong mga species na merong multiple carpels. At karamihan ng mga species ay merong two or more carpels na pinagsama in a single structure. Ang resulta, yung ovary ay merong dalwa o mahigit pang chambers. At ang bawat chambers ay merong isa o mahigit pang ovules. At pag-usapan naman natin yung mga types of flowers depende doon sa kanilang structure. Meron tayong tinatawag na complete flowers. Ibig sabihin, meron sila ng four basic floral organs. O yung tinatawag din natin na bisexual. Ibig sabihin, meron silang both male and female reproductive organs. Example natin dyan, yung hibiscus and yung ating roses. Pangalawa, meron tayong tinatawag na incomplete flowers. Lack of functional stamen and carpels. O tinatawag din natin na unisexual. Ibig sabihin, pwedeng wala sila ng stamen or carpels. Example natin dyan, itong flower ng squash. And meron tayong tinatawag na inflorescence arranged in showy clusters. Example natin dyan is yung tinatawag natin na sunflower. Dahil yung kanyang central disc, itong nasa gitna, ay binubuo ng hundreds of tiny incomplete flowers. And what look like petals are actually sterile flowers. Ngayon, nalaman natin ang iba't ibang klase ng bulaklak base sa kanilang structure. At ngayon, ilagay muna natin yung ating sagot doon sa mga missing parts ng ating flower. At isulat ang inyong sagot doon sa ating comment box. At mamaya, mapapanood naman natin ang development of male gametophytes in fallen grains and development of female gametophytes in embryo sacs. Kaya huwag kayong aalis. And now, let's go back to our discussion for today, which is all about the development of male and female gametophytes. Kasunod lang ito na napag-usapan natin about the structure and function of the flowers. Ngayon, dito mas iintindihin natin kung paano nga ba nade-develop yung male and female gametophytes sa loob ng mga reproductive organs. At sa development of male gametophytes in pollen grains, makikita natin na meron tayo ditong red and then the blue arrow. Para mas mabilis natin malaman, yung red arrow indicates the haploid stages and the blue arrow indicates the diploid stages. Unang mangyayari dito sa development of male gametophytes is yung tinatawag natin na meiosis. Sa kailangan, meron tayo ditong flower, and then yung bawat flower, meron tayong tinatawag na anther, which is part of the male reproductive organs, organ, the stamen. And doon sa anther, meron tayong apat, okay, na microsporangia, or also known as pollen sacs. Within the microsporangia are many diploid cells called microsporocyte, this one, or what we call the microspore mother cells. And each microsporocyte undergo meiosis forming four haploid microspores, each of which eventually give rise to haploid male gametophyte. And each microspore undergo mitosis, producing male gametophyte consisting of only two cells. That two cells, itatawagin natin a generative cell and the tube cell. Together, these two cells and the spore wall, itong kulay brown na to, constitute a pollen grain and the spore wall which consists of material produced by both the microspore and the anther usually exhibits an elaborate pattern unique to the species. And during the maturation of the male gametophyte, the generative cell passes into the tube cell and the spore wall is completed. And the tube cell now has a completely freestanding cell inside it. After the microsporangium breaks open and releases the pollen, a pollen grain may be transferred to a receptive surface of the stigma. And then the tube cell produces the pollen tube, the sa ating female gametophyte. 
and then later on okay dito sa female gametophyte and then later on the pollen tubes gr can grow very quickly as a pollen tube elongates through the style yung ating generative cell ay magdi-divide para makapag-produce ng dalawang sperm cells na kung saan mananatili doon sa loob ng tube cell at yung pollen tube ay mag-grow through the style and into the ovary kung saan magre-release ng sperm cells in the vicinity of the female gametophyte. At ngayon, pag-usapan naman natin yung development of female gametophytes. Yung female gametophyte, tinatawag din natin yun na embryo sac. The entire process occurs in a tissue within each ovule called megasporangium. At meron tayong tinatawag dyan na dalawang integuments. Ito yun, okay? That later on, it will develop into a seed coat. At ito yung nakasurround dun sa bawat megasporangium. Magsisimula lamang yung development ng female gametophyte kapag yung isang cell na tinatawag natin na megasporocyte or the megaspore mother cell na naandun sa megasporangium ay, mag ay nag-undergo ng meiosis. At later on, magpaproduce yun ng tinatawag natin na 4 haploid megaspore. So again, so makikita natin yung blue na arrow, lahat ng yun ay nag-undergo ng meiosis. And then, yung apat na yon, okay, apat na haploid megaspore, isa lamang dun, okay, yung magsusurvive. And then, the rest, magde-degenerate. And the nucleus of the surviving megaspore, or the megaspore, divides by mitosis three times without the cytokinesis. Ang resulta, magkakaroon tayo ng isang one large cell with eight haploid nuclei. Again, yung walong haploid nuclei na yon, ito yung tinatawag natin na tatlong antipodal. Okay, ito yan. And then we have the two polar nuclei or the polar nucleus. At meron tayong dalawang synergid na nandun sa parehong tabi. And then nandun tayo at meron tayong tinatawag na isang egg. At mapapansin din natin na meron tayo dito ang tinatawag na may gagamitopite at saka yung microgamitopite. Yung nangyari kanina sa male um, development ng male gamitopite. Yung letter N na yan nag sa tinatawag natin na haploid. Again, pag haploid, ibig sabihin, single set of chromosomes. And then, yung ating walong haploid nuclei na nabuo dahil doon sa mitosis ay merong kanya-kanyang function. Doon sa end ng ating micropylar end, meron tayong tinatawag na dalawang synergids na kung saan tumutulong to para mag-attract at mag-guide sa pollen tube papunta sa embryo sac. Yung tatlong antipodal naman, okay, they have the unknown function. Samantalang yung ating dalawang polar nuclei, nandito lamang sila to share with the cytoplasm dun sa loob ng embryo sac. And then the ovule, which will become seed, will now consist of the embryo sac and the two surrounding integuments. So again, yung integuments natin will later on become the seed coat. And then the next steps na mangyayari is yung tinatawag natin na pollination and then the double fertilization. So pag-uusapan natin yan mamaya. Pero bigyan lang natin ng summary yung pinag-usapan natin about the development of the male gametophyte which is in the pollen grain. So again, pollen grains develop within the microsporangia or what we call the pollen sacs of anthers at the tips of the stamens. Each of the microsporangia contain diploid microsporocyte or what we call the microspore mother cells and each microsporocyte divides by meiosis producing four haploid microspores each of which develops into a pollen grain within the pollen grain the male gametophyte becomes mature when its generated nucleus divides forming two sperm this usually occurs after a pollen grain lands on the stigma which is part of the carpel and the pollen tube begins to grow. The development of the female gametophyte, or also known as the embryo sac. The embryo sac develops within an ovule itself and closed by the ovary of, at the base of a carpel. And then the first step is, within the ovules, megasporangium is a large diploid cell called megasporocyte, or the megaspore mother cell. And then the meg megasporocyte divides by meiosis and gives rise to four haploid cells. But in most species, only one of these survives as the megaspores. And the three mitotic division of the megaspores form the embryo sac and then a multicellular female gametophyte. 
the ovule now consists of the embryo sac along with the surrounding integuments or the protective tissue. At ngayon, nalaman natin kung paano na develop ang male and female gametophytes or the pollen grains and embryo sacs. Meron pang kailangan mangyari sa isang halaman at yun yung tinatawag natin na pollination. It is the transfer of pollen from an anther to a stigma and it is accomplished by a wind, water, or animals. Yung wind and water natin, mga tinatawag natin na abiotic, okay, agents. And then yung mga animals like birds, butterflies, bees, yun yung mga tinatawag natin na mga biotic pollinators natin. Meron tayong dalawang klase ng pollination, the self-pollination and then the cross-pollination. Pag sinasabi natin na self-pollination, the transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of the flower of the same plant. So, ibig sabihin, once na yung pollen na loose, from the stamen, automatically, the pistil of the same flower collects the pollen. Next is the cross-pollination or the transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of a flower to the same species in a different plant. So, ibig sabihin, kailangan natin dito ng mga pollinators or the pollinating agent. For example, itong bees na makikita natin. So, kinolect niya yung pollen grains and then mag-sticks dun sa kanyang, okay, mag-audidicat dun sa bee yung mga pollen from the stamens and then later on, pag lumipat sa ibang halaman, yung pollen na naandun sa bee ay didikit naman doon sa pistil ng halaman. Yung halaman natin, meron silang iba't ibang um, tinagawa or adaptation to attract specific type of animals that act as an agent of pollination. Halimbawa, yung mga bulaklak, okay, meron silang mababangong scent, o di kaya magagandang klase ng kulay, malalapad na petals, para makapag-attract ng mga pollinators. So, ibig sabihin, nakakatulong yung structure ng isang bulaklak to attract pollinators. What happens after the pollination? So, ang sagot dyan is the pollen germination. Na kung saan yung after nung pollen mag-landed sa stigma of the flower, yung pollen grain ay mag-aabsorb agad ng liquid or the water from the stigma and then mag-start ng mag-germinate. And then, yung mga generative cell natin ay mag-divide sa pamamagitan ng mitosis para makapag-produce ng dalawang sperm cell. It is the same doon sa napag-usapan natin sa ating um, development of male gametophyte. Sperm cells are naked at tatawagin natin siya ngayon yung sperm nuclei. And then the tube cell okay, will have to guide the growth of a long cylindrical extension of the pollen na tinatawag natin ngayon na pollen tube. And yung pollen tubes na yun, hahaba until ma-reach niya yung tinatawag natin na microfile of the ovule. At ano namang mangyayari kapag na-reach ng pollen yung ovule? Okay, technically the sperm nuclei travel down the tube. As the wall of, as the wall of the tip of the pollen tube breaks, the sperm nuclei are discharged into the embryo sac. And ang huli natin pag-uusapan today is yung tinatawag natin na double fertilization. Bago yan, tanungin ko muna kayo. Ilang sperm cell yung na-produce during the pollen germination? Okay, tama. Dalawang sperm cell. Ibig sabihin, Yung dalawang sperm cell na yan, gagamitin natin sa double fertilization. Yung unang sperm, one haploid sperm fertilizes the haploid egg, forming the diploid zygote. And then the other sperm fertilizes the central cell containing two polar nuclei, forming the triploid endosperm. Okay, doon sa ating female gametophyte, ito yung tinatawag natin na egg. Yung naandun sa may parehong tab nasa gitna ng ating synergid, at yung tinatawag natin na polar nucleus na sila pareho yung na-fertilize dun sa dalawang sperm cell ng ating male gametophyte. There are two fertilization events in the process. It is called as double fertilization. And the zygote undergoes a series of mitotic division producing a mass of undifferentiated cells called the embryo. The endosperm cell divides producing a nutritive tissue that will nourish the developing embryo. And then we have a seed coat which will protect the embryo that develops from the obvious integuments. And to end our discussion for today, so I hope um, you understand the structure and function of a flower and also the development of male and female gametophyte including the pollination, we have the pollen germination and then the double fertilization. Dahil kung hindi natin intindihan, yung mga process na ito, Pwede naman natin balikan yung video simula una para at least mas malaman natin paano nga ba nakapag-develop ng male and female gametophyte. Dahil sa susunod nating video, 
pag-uusapan na natin yung fruit and seed germination at kung paano nga ba nakakapag-produce yung halaman mula dun sa seed. So stay tuned in this YouTube channel. So I hope you learned something today. Always remember, science is life and science for all. Thank you for watching.